Radiohead. There, there. XFM. 104.9. We drive Steve Mitch and Carl Pilkington. Right, Rockbusters. Well, you blo- you know, you shot yourself in the foot with that, so, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, what did you think of first? His name and what words you could put in there? Uh, I normally thought I'd just go through a Guinness Book of Hit singles and go, right, who can I do? All right. You're giving away a lot of, I mean, that, you know, you're an enigma, Carl. I wouldn't give away your workings. I mean, because cause then everyone would be able to do it. And what, you, what you've got now is a gift that people can't really tap into. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, that's what, that's what Lenny Henry and, um, Chris Miles' mistake. See, I, I've sort of worked out how they do their comedy, and I'm doing it now. Mm, sure. Do you see what sure. I mean? Now that, you know, I'm, I'm doing- I'm I mean, coming. I think the only way that, that people would start to be able to replicate a lot of what Carl does is if maybe they had a severe blow to the head, <laughs> or they were diving and they came up to the surface too quickly. Ding dong! Oh, I'd like a severe blow! I'll oh, get lost, David! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have some adverts, quick. <laughs> Steely Dan, reeling in the years. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> look, he's, right, look, he's gone to put on his little duffel coat. Yeah. Well, I'm not very well. You look like someone that walks around Forbidden Planet. <laughs> Um, Don't say that, that's the ultimate insult. <laughs> you can say I look like something that you'd buy in Forbidden Planet, <laughs> but not someone that goes shopping in there. Please. The Professor. Oh, The Professor. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, talking about weird looking, um, heads and stuff. Go on. Um, we're, um, doing that cartoon on the internet at the moment, that little cartoon I did of, um, uh, Carl. And the bid's up to- Hang on, sorry, that doesn't make any sense to people that don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I did a little cartoon of Carl. And, um, because he doesn't like his picture in the paper, when people request a picture of us, he started sending that off, and it's in heat, and it? it's gonna be in Jack, and they put it on the internet, and they, they're bidding for it, aren't they? Yeah, it's at, uh, 200 quid. That's oh, ridiculous, that's isn't crazy. it? That's so crazy. So what I thought was, we've got, a, we've got to frame it, Carl, we've got to put the copy of Heat in or something, you'll have to, the, the, the winning show, the show that they win on, um, you'll have to do a copy of that, so they, you know what I mean, they get something for their money. I think, I'm, I'm mildly embarrassed. So, uh, it's for good cause and everything. But, um, didn't someone say 250 if they can come in and watch the show? Yeah. We can't do that, we don't know people. But what I thought was, what about the winner gets to come in and squeeze your head? So they get in for just, just two minutes, we present them with it. No, yeah. I'm not, no. What do you mean, no? I'm not having strangers coming in squeezing my head. What? You mean it's for charity? It's for charity, Cole. Come on, mate. What, I don't, what are you like? I don't like? care. I'm not doing that. They're I not think even an ill person would say, no, it's alright, I'm not that ill. What do you mean? You don't have to have your head squoze. Yeah, squoze. Squoze! <laughs> you don't have to have your head squoze. Alright, let's move on. <laughs> so how have they bid so, then? Yeah, so how will they know they've won? xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, you can see the picture on there. If you're interested, if you think it's worth more than 200 and you've got some money, then you, you send an email in saying I'll give you you know, 220 quid or something. But are you not gonna let them squeeze your head? No. So we get someone here, the art department here, they're, they're, we're, we're, we frame it up, I'll put a, a little note of like, uh, authenticity, yeah. Brilliant. A picture of us. Can they have a real picture of you? A little Imagine David scene. Dickinson examining that in a couple <laughs> of years' time. <laughs> <laughs> this is as cheap as chips. <laughs> yeah. You can sue him then, because he ripped off your phrase a little yeah. bit, didn't he? Yeah. You've been done here, mate. You have uh, more money than sense. Uh, I'll tell you what, have we got monkey news today? We might, not, we might not get to it, mate. We are running out of time. No, we're doing it. What do you mean, we're doing it? It's th- The show isn't complete without it. I'd rather drop adverts and stuff. Well, I'd rather drop adverts. No, we're doing monkey news. Do you like Rick, my concern is that if you put monkey news on the, s- on the subs bench, it's gonna be like David Beckham. Yeah. He's gonna have his eye wandering to other radio yeah, stations. Yeah, And look what, 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 look what he's doing. Yeah, he's he off to Real Madrid. He might be leaving off to Real Madrid. I might take monkey news off the radio too or something. Yeah. Right? So yeah. don't, don't um, believe in monkey news. I, I, I imagine if they're listening now, they're probably gonna call you and go, Carl, were you serious about bringing monkey news to Radio 2? Because <laughs> it, it checks open. <laughs> Well, do you, do you want a bit now, or what? What would? Well, no, I wanted you to tell uh, Steve about your holiday, because you told me. I oh. Go on, Steve. I mean, bad, bad idea. I had a feeling anyway about uh, going away with like Suzanne's mum and dad, because I've never been into sort of family holidays anyway, yeah. right? Uh, even when you see it, whenever I've been on holiday and you see like families on planes and that, and they're all having a laugh and a joke, loving it. And then on the plane going back, you can see that they've gone off into groups and like, you know, the dad isn't talking to the daughter and all that business. So I thought, asking for trouble, but you know, I do everything once. Do you know what I mean? Boxing, <laughs> dancing, yeah. going on holiday with parents and that. Yeah. Give it a go, see how it goes, right? Mm. So, um. Not your A levels, but fair it, enough. <laughs> it, it started off, it, it started off bad, didn't it? Cause last week I told you that, uh, you know, a dad called us up and said, 
you know, I want to take some tea bags with us to Madeira. Yeah. What's the best way of packing them? Yeah. Right, so I knew there was gonna be problems like that because the thing with, um, Suzanne's family, right, they, they like having a routine. Mm. They know what they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. They know what they're having for tea every day. <laughs> it's the same thing every week and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought this is gonna be interesting, this, because they can't do what they normally do. Sure. Right. I love it. I love you treating it like an experiment. Yeah. Right. Just watching them all the time. So, um, the first problem was they've never flown before. So I was winding them up a bit. So of course you know, it's, it's murder. It's really horrible. Uh, you know, play, plane goes all over the place. And my mum had done some research saying, well, I've been reading about it and, uh... Well, she got a funny accent. More, more people, uh, more, there's more chance of me being killed on a donkey than there is on a plane. So, I hope so. I said, right, when we get there, Spain. I said, when we get there, let's see if there's any donkeys on the beach. Yeah. Right? And she didn't like that. So... Oh, what? To joke about you hoping she died? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's up with her? Right, so we get there and, um, you know, it, it, they see the villa and that, they're quite happy with all that business, yeah. right, and all that stuff. And then, as time went on, I was getting a bit sort of fed up with them being around us all the time. Cause yeah, sure. I think you should have your own time when you go on holiday yeah. with course, the yeah. family. You should say, right, you go off and do your thing. Yeah. We'll do our thing and we'll meet up later and talk about what we've been doing and mm. stuff. Mm. Anyway, so it gets to like the Thursday. We've been away since Monday, right? And uh, I said, right, we're going out tonight. So a mum says, yeah, we'll come with you. I said, no, no. It's just us, we're having a bit of time on our own, right? Did you, is it true you said to her, you told me this, you said to her, you started to annoy me, I want to go on my own. Well I just said, well I told her at the start, I said it's gonna be interesting this, cause people annoy me when they're around me a lot. Sure. So I wasn't nasty to her, I just was saying people, not her. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you're gonna get on my nerves. <laughs> so, um... You hailed a donkey for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but, uh, seriously, right, with the flying, do you know those stockings? That you can get because of, uh, deep vein thrombosis. Sure. She had them on in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And it's only a two-hour flight as well, so that was annoying me. Right, so, so, um, so anyway, it gets to this, it gets to this, um, you know, the, the, th the Thursday night when we, when I'm going out with Suzanne. Yeah. And, uh, a mum's like sat, sat on the, on the sun lounger outside, so and so, where are we going tonight? I said, no, like I said, it's just, it's just us, we're going out, having a bit of time to ourselves. So, uh, I could see as the day was getting on, she was realising that she's got a night in with, like, her husband, yeah. right? Uh, she started, her face started to, like, look miserable. Sure. I thought, I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, right, I'm, uh, I'm going in to go and have a shower, go and, uh, get ready for this tonight, it's gonna be great. And winding them up, just yeah. wind them up because they can't come, because yeah. he said they can't. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I go upstairs, have a, uh, have a shower and that. I come down, and, uh, a mum's smiling. Oh, hang on. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's, what's going on here? So I went to Suzanne, I said, uh, why is your mum smiling? She's, she's not coming. She said, uh, no, but, uh, my dad said he'll, he'll take her out now. So in a way she was happy because she got her own way. Yeah. Which had annoyed me. That annoyed again. you, sure, because you, like, like, oh, you don't even want her husband taking her out. Well, it's just the fact she didn't want to go out. She was happy to stay in and have sausage, egg and chips that they'd found from some shop that sold English food. Right. So that's almost like what they do if they're sausage, at Sausage, egg and chips. So yeah. she was happy with that if we were staying in and having that. Because well, we were going out, she was fed up. Right. right? So she's smiling, so she's going, yeah, I'm going out now. So I said, well, enjoy yourself. She said, where are you going? I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You don't need to know. Sure. She's yeah. not going to where we're going. Oh, you just don't want us to be in the same restaurant. So yeah, that's right. I said, I want a night out on my own with Suzanne. It's our holiday as well. Yeah. I don't know. I can talk to me. Like this. this is not even his own parents. This is someone else's parents. These are the parents of the women of the woman he loves. But but even Suzanne sort of agreed with me. There's only so much time you can spend with your parents. That's why you leave. That's why when you're ill, you don't go home to them. <laughs> Yeah? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the slight difference between you, you, me and you, Carl, is that not everyone in the world annoys me. Well, n not everyone does, just... I can see what I was, I felt a bit guilty that week when he said I was annoying him, but I realise it's not my fault now. No, everyone annoys him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was an alright holiday. It was good to get back. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I won't be doing it again. No. Um, and what now would you say is your relationship with Suzanne's parents? Is it, is it a frosty one? Uh, no, I just think they know that I, that I don't like to them, them for a long time. Yeah. 
I mean, when, when we were packing, a man was upset because, like, she really liked the place where we were staying, right? Because it was quite a big villa, because there was a few of us. There was a brother as well with us, right? Yeah. So, uh, a mum said, oh, I love it here. She said, uh, I'm definitely gonna book this place again. I said, it's a bit, bit, you know, a bit big for two of you, innit? Just being sarky, like, we're yeah. definitely, just- I said, because, uh, you know, I won't be coming again. You're like, I don't know what you're like, Carl. You're just, you're a monster. You're an absolute you're monster. You're one of those people that goes, I say as I speak as I find, I say as I, and, and, and jibbered whap the wibble. Yeah. And never the way will slap. You're like uh. a middle-aged man. You're like an old man. You're like an old man and you're, and you're what, 30? I'm just imagine you scraping along in clogs and a flat cap going, oh, that tree's got to come down. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Puncturing a kid's ball if he kicks it into your garden by mistake. Yeah. Refusing to give it back. Mm. Yeah, uh, gather round, gather round. Yeah, there were once Chinese kid as airy as that cow, which is weird because there's not many Chinese <laughs> people that airy, but this one, I tell you, it were back in 1990. Granddad, are you eating a Twix? <laughs> we're actually running out of time. It's so jam packed to show. We've got monkey news on the bench. Carl, just remembered, we've got Cheeky Freak of the Week to fit in. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, what's your Cheeky Freak of the Week, quickly? Just throw that away. Right, well, it's just like, you know, we look at, we look at Cheeky freaks. Uh, is this show offensive in any way to some people, do you think? Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Got any buns? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the elephant man. Go on. Right, well, it's a bit of a problem for you, this one, Steve, right? I'm chucking it forward to you. Remember the, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week that we were talking about? Uh, that, that illness where people age quicker? Mm, the five-year-old girl that was older than her mum, mm, and mm. he said to you, what, if you ran off as you wouldn't serve her fags and beer and you went, no, you went, why not? And you went, because it's a five-year-old, yeah. right? He went, oh, she's got enough problems, give her some fags. <laughs> you remember that, <laughs> yeah, don't sure, you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right. So, another dilemma for you, right? Picture this, you're running a restaurant, right? Door goes, right? Uh, few people, most of them look normal. You know it's the woman at the back, <laughs> crawling on all fours. <laughs> uh, top half is woman, right? This is real. Yes. This isn't like a comic or anything. This is on, yeah, on the they, internet. Yeah, I've seen it. They're called dog people and her legs just come straight down. They're like little swing legs at the back and so they walk on all fours because it's easier. Dog people, right? Yeah. You've Not dog people. They're human beings right. with yeah. deformed back legs so they walk. It's easier for them to get around like that because they can't, they can't stand up because they can't stabilize and also it comes straight out of their hips. Right. Right. So you're running a restaurant. It's a busy night. You haven't really got time for any hassle. She comes in. Uh-huh. Would you serve her? Um, the premise being what? That he doesn't serve dogs? Because the restaurants don't allow animals in. Right! Shh, she... Right. Right. So it's a dilemma. It's not a dilemma, right. she's not a dog. She's a human being. Yeah, with I, put the form... I put, you know, a plate of meatballs on the floor <laughs> <laughs> and she tucks in. And a little glass of, you know, a little bowl of wine <laughs> next to it. Ah, <laughs> uh, it turns round, there's the <laughs> woman older than... Uh, Get away from that plan! Is <laughs> 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 service included? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so monkey news please. All right, all right then. <laughs> Let's hear the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, before... <laughs> before oh, and again, and again. Go on. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Brilliant. Right? Um, right, before I went away, I told you about Alfred. Um, he was the, he was the monkey where there was a, a robbery going on in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then he nicked the robber's loot and backed out. Yeah. With a gun. Yeah, he everybody... sort of stole, he, he robbed the robber, didn't he? Yeah. Did he take his gun as well? He took he the weapons, he took all the weapons, there was like a couple of robbers. He managed because they were so amazed that a monkey was coming in. It was like Don't what? talk shite twice. Right. Anyway. So anyway. Got a follow up to that. Okay. Now what was that that monkey's name? Um Alfred. That was Alfred. Um so anyway, um because a lot of people wanted to know well you know, what did he do? Did he go off and have a holiday? Did he no no no. Right, so, <laughs> so um so the follow up is what happened is the monkey had the guns had the cash, which was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Sure. Right. It went back to the zoo. Right. 
Uh, you, all right, Carl, you're talking shit. Do, you, Ricky, oh. I get angry with you when you won't let oh. him finish his monkey news. Christ. Can we just get that? Really Imagine thing. if people were interrupting Trevor McDonald. I don't, it wouldn't happen. I don't want to, I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. No, of course not. Um, no, so, so yeah. check the internet. So, uh, the monkey goes back to the zoo, right, where all the zookeepers come out and go, get him. He's, he's got the guns. Yeah. He hands out a couple of guns to his mates. What? Right. His monkey mates? His monkey mates, so they've all got a couple of guns each. Oh, Carl, uh, Steve, I can't, mate. I can't <laughs> stand it. Honestly, I want to scream. Please, I really get annoyed with you. They tried to do him a, do him a deal. They said, how about if- uh, I'm going. Tell him that. I'm right. not going. No, I can't. Step out for a moment. Uh, okay, we'll just do it. Look, don't ridiculous. listen. Step out and I'll paraphrase what, what I hear for you when you come back in. Step out. No, please, I need to hear- I need to hear the end of this. Now, yeah. This is monkey news. This is important <laughs> stuff. Right. Right, Ricky now has left the room, he cannot- he cannot bear to hear, which is surprising to me. Right, so anyway, um, so yeah, they've got the money, mm. and they say to the zookeepers, how about, uh, we give you some cash? Yes. And they go- oh. Sorry, that, well, hang on, sorry, the zookeeper said that to the monkeys? Yeah. Right. No, 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 the monkeys who have got the 250,000 pounds- Right. Say to the zookeepers, <laughs> we'll sort you some money out if you let us go. So right. the monkeys say to the zookeepers, <laughs> We'll give you some money. Yeah. You don't see any problem with that? Right, listen. Okay. Let, it's nearly finished. Right, I'm listening out there. You could, this is ridiculous. To go! What do you mean the monkeys what? say? What do you mean the monkeys say to the zookeeper? They were probably holding the money out, like, kind of going, look, you know, we'll do your deal. Right, okay, come on. Um, and what happened is, I think, uh, I think that, I think they were happy with that. I think they left and that was that. They, they, they wanted to get out of the zoo because they didn't like it in there. There's the thing. Right, I, I don't, I, just have a look. Right, Carl, think. Right, how did they get out in the first place, this one? Just let Steve have a... So why did he go, so he went and robbed, he thought, uh, what, he knew there was gonna be a robbery that day, did he? He might have been getting some money before they went to escape and then that happened and they had more money. They might have been withdrawing some stuff out. What do you mean? If no. If he was planning on leaving the zoo, he's gonna get his savings. What are you talking about? What have you read there, Steve? I, I've got a, I've got a feeling this is a review of one of the Planet of the Apes films. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes, like, I'm not certain. It could be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Right, what, I mean, Carl, think, think, please think, right? So this, this monkey, right, he leaves the zoo, right? He, so he leaves the zoo, which he can do, presumably, what, they leave him the keys or what? They're chatting to him, they might as well. He goes to a bank, what, what's he, what's he thinking of doing? Sees a robbery, probably by chance. He probably wasn't tipped off, was he? Or has he got one of those police scanners? Probably got one of those police scanners, didn't well, he? Well, I think he was going to the bank to get a mortgage to, uh, build a, a lot, sorry, I think he wanted an extension, didn't he, on his, uh, cage? Think of that. And so, he, the, I love the fact that he hands out the guns and they do a deal. <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, you've got the best, you've got the best mind working on radio today. It's incredible. So the only person who makes less sense is Terry Wogan. <laughs> <laughs> it goes up and down, I doesn't don't know it? What I can't about. understand his sentences because I don't know. No. It's like freeform poetry. It's, I don't know whether it's the end of a sentence in the middle. Sure. Is that a new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's it, have the jingle again, a record, and then we'll uh, probably have to wrap up the show. I imagine. That was oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news. Well, Mr. Stipe, uh, I am not Kenneth, but I can tell you the frequency was one oh four point nine. See you next week. Oh, I'm Ricky Gervais with like me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Do you think that when Marconi invented radio, this was what he had in mind for it? <laughs> yeah, two hours of absolute. See you later. Excellent. Buy in bottles, Richard Ashcroft on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Now listen up, right? It's the Sony Awards this Thursday. Now, for those who don't know, the Sony Awards are like the the Oscars. For, for radio, uh, presenters and producers and everything, right? So, and as you know, me and Steve, we love to win. We want to win this one. This is the last time the panel will be listening. So, I want a good, a good, clean, tight show, okay. right? So no, no swearing, joking aside, no swearing, nothing controversial and, and, uh, nothing in bad taste, alright? Guess, good well, luck out there. Aren't okay. we a little bit buggered then? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. So, alright, Carl? Yeah, that's alright. Just, it's just when you say things like, uh, you know, make it a good one. Sometimes it sort of puts a bit of pressure on and things slip out that you shouldn't say and 
stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had that? What, when you can't- It's like, I'll tell you, you one, I'll tell you one story, right? I'll tell you a couple, actually. That, on. that one's just come to mind r right now, right? There was a fella who, um, who my dad was gonna meet. I don't know if I told you this before, right? But, um, I have told you, when, when it was a party and everyone was saying, Dave's coming, he looks like Ken Dodd. But don't say anything, I've told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, what is it again? And, uh, everyone's like, right, oh, and my dad's like, oh, I've never met him, I wonder if he does look like Ken Dodd. And everyone's saying, yeah, but don't say anything. Yeah. Because you'll accidentally, you know, say it and- The unbunctious, you might go, uh, you unbunctious to meet you. So, the thing is, when this fella turns up, he did look like Ken. My dad couldn't believe it. First thing he said, nice to meet you, Ken. Oh, <laughs> oh no. His name's Dave. <laughs> and that's the sort of thing, there was another one, right? <laughs> Uh, at a station that I worked at in, uh, in Manchester, right, uh, there was this girl who worked in the newsroom, right, and, uh, she had a, a plastic arm, right? Right. And this presenter, nice bloke, he didn't, you know, he's not out to hurt anyone, went up to her, sat down, was chatting for a bit, touched the arm, said, what lovely skin you've got. <laughs> what did she say? I, I, I think, I think, I mean, she's probably used to it, so she wasn't bothered. And then, right, this one, this is brilliant. Um, this is a sort of gaff he made on air, right? <laughs> and like I say, he's a nice bloke, so he meant nothing by it, right? But he does this competition on the air, gets a caller on, right? And uh, he's talking to the woman saying, you know, thanks for calling in and to play, I don't know, what, what have I got in my pocket or whatever that he used to play on the show, right? And uh, talking to the woman, in the background there's this noise, right? Like, <coughs> like that, right? So he's talking. And he goes, uh, have you got a, uh, pet parrot? She said, no, it's my Down syndrome kid. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Uh, the thing is, awards don't matter. No, I don't think so. Play record? The Smiths and Panic. Don't worry about it, Carl. People know that there's, you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. So, uh, they, they, they know it's confusion. Don't worry. No, it did happen. So it's I not. know, I know, yeah. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what. At the beginning of the week, I was um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you. I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back, saying that um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money like, for old It's money rope. for rope. It, That's it's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what's the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer. And he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right? I got back a holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in, it was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying, we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right? Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought, right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they. they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple well, of days. I didn't days. get the message. I got all I got was there was a company I don't remember the name, and they phoned you. They wanted voiceover. I, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take more, down a number. You didn't take down a name. Nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know why. No, but listen to that oh, voice. No, you must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Know, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you, I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> What do I care? What's going on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for a rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They're offering me money. 
and you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it, they probably made a mistake, I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway, I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid- What if girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get you decent prizes, I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do, that's what you'd want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me, they say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve, uh, I'd love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 a well, exciting sex scene. Well, you've never called me, so has it happened? Well, it happened? well look, what I'm saying, in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh. the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still alright. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. Oh, 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 selfish, oh. Carl. So selfish. And you've lost us Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what has happened to Carl? Cause Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his, his ways. You know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after a, some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's, and now he's coming back like that, having a go at, not, not caring about voiceover work. It's like, cause he have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cause Carl, I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl, doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> I don't, I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, he, you, exactly. You, you've got no comeback. You're still sweet. And to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine, right? Your voice, like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's. I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a wurzel, but that right. doesn't. Do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up, and he's on there, Straight on and there. he's whining like a wurzel as well. So. You know, to say that that all right, is what, a rubbish. What, all right. Apart from that, then what else have I done? That's wound you up. Well, that's 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 a that's a good starting point because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down, and I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't. Well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being recognised in pubs and stuff, where people have come up and they said, "Are you Carl?" Because they've seen Ricky. Now it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just you no. cannot deal with fame. You've not got the intelligence to cope no. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just. Becoming no, this kind getting. of ego driven no, monster. Getting. No, it's getting. No, it's getting. It scares me, Carl. Getting You're not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't even my proper job. Right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up. Let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I mean, that, that is arrogance right there. That's the way I That's work. arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, uh, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay in with your landlady. Is, is, he talked about it for about the hour when we were working. What are you talking, I, I, last week I had a bad throat, you yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that, you wouldn't accept that. When you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you're at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again! He's hey. done you again, mate! Play a record! How has he done me? What? Well, they live in Bristol! <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, the joke's on you! He couldn't get him to clean the flat! <laughs> ah! I don't know who's laughing at who, then. Right, listen. <laughs> Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay! Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay, alright. Okay. Do you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right, well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. 
Do you want to, uh, read out the prizes for uh, Rockbusters? We'll get, we'll get that one in. Are oh, we not, we're not doing Rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We, we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, b both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, a good I don't know. Just... What do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. <laughs> uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My yeah, point is this, he was Rick. looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I now know. it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rock buses, He gets to do it. I know. And it's it's awful, rock that, that, uh, Tourette's Trent Derby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? <laughs> What's the prices? Oh, we know the prices. We've got uh, a brand new XFM, a stylish XFM uh, DJ bag. That is actually nice. quite nice, actually. Yeah, we've got in there a uh, 12 inch from uh, the XFM remix album. This has got the Cure on there and the Prodigy remixes from them, which is uh, quite handy. We've got a little mouse mm. mat there with the XFM logo on. And here's what everyone's waiting for the CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Um, once again, the X list. This is the compilation that XFM have put out. It's actually very good. Uh, Smash Hits, The Reunion. Let me see what we've got in there. Aha, obviously, Wham, Duran Duran, all your favourite 80s and 90s classics. Another copy of DVD, uh, Steve Coogan's Coogan's Run DVD. What else is this here? Low Fidelity All Stars. Blah, 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 blah. That's some. There's Voodoo House and Ghost Funk on there, Rick. I'm sure that'd be right up your street. And uh, also on DVD, Man. Is that Child. with or without wrecked train? <laughs> uh, so yeah, not not a bad little selection there, Carl. You're, you're yeah, you've done well you're there. Done well. So go on and do the clues. Then let's do Rockbusters now. Uh, well, I'll, I'll bung a song on. And we'll, 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 yeah. I love the fact that he was taking the piss out of your voice. I bung a song on. <laughs> hey, it's tribe and cow wheels tonight. Uh, now it's griddling as gravy. <laughs> to be honest, Carl, let's be honest. If Ricky Gervais can get voiceover work, do you know what there's got to be a place for me. Where do you think the place for him is? Well, look, right. You were talking about your face on the poster. <laughs> it's not all bad because I read something last night that can help you out. <gasps> right, and it's amazing. So we're talking about that. Fair record, Carl. Warren Zevon ain't that pretty at all on its own. 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilgrim. Right, Carl, calm now. The Sonys, they're listening. We've got to win this award. We're just bickering, right? What, what's this thing that can help Steve out? What are you talking no, about? No, no, we'll talk about that in a bit. What are we doing now? We'll then? do, we'll do Rockbusters. Get that up and running. Yes, sir. Get me email busy. Thank yeah. you, sir. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Go on in. Right, so. You know how it works. Cryptic clues, initials. Well, as I say, I say every week, they're not, they're not strictly cryptic. It's more, what am I thinking that starts with these letters? Some cryptic a word. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? Cryptic? Cause... <laughs> oh. Anyway. Oh, God. So last week, uh, one of them was these people from the East Midlands can't help swearing. Yeah. Sorry. Tourette's Trent Derby. Tourette's Trent That's Derby. That's the sort of shite we're dealing with to try and get a Sony. Right, so, uh, here's the clues and that. <laughs> First one. And that. Um, what are we after here? The artist? Yeah. The band name or solo artist? It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Right. Go on. Uh, so the first one, the, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Got <laughs> it, what's the initials? VH, right? The hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah. Right? Second one. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Right. The initial there is C. Right. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Uh, and the sure that's one. not what is Carl, he's selfish. No. Nope. Begins with C. Right. And, <laughs> and the third one, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. <laughs> right, right, okay. The, the Scottish, Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. Go on then. Right, the initials there, KL. Right, so quickly again, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car, VH. Yeah. Don't be selfish, and some of that out to your mates. Right. C. This is your last chance, Carl. And the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. If I hear help. anything like Wet Knee Houston or D Trout Spinners or Tourette's Trent Derby coming out of this, we're never doing it again. Okay? Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So. Just, just cause breakfast do it and that, and uh, just, just leave it maybe this week, see what happens. See if we need it, see, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know, play record a minute, Carl. I wanna talk to you, I'll talk to you off air, play record. Or what? What's the, what's the, 
So what's the, uh, uh, email address again? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Okay. Right? That's where the email the answer's in. So we've got, to, we've got to remind you whose show it is. Play record. I'm Ricky Gervais, and with me, arguing like nutters, are <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay. All right? Calm down. Right. Right, let's just chill. Let's okay. just chill. Yeah, right. Did, what did you do last night, Rick? Uh, I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I tried last week, I knew Tuffner was gonna come through. Mm -hmm. I knew he was. I went went to put a bet on and it was eleven to four and I thought, oh that's not worth it. I could have put on four hundred quid and I reckon I'd have won eleven hundred because I reckon he's gonna win. Yeah. So, uh, that is annoying. I bet if you could go back in time, you'd probably change things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'd do if I could go back in time? I'd go back in time and stop Hitler from being born. <laughs> but then it might be worse because someone else might have come along and he'd have been even better. It's like a novel. <laughs> yeah, like Ben right. Alton would write a novel yeah. like that or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that things would be different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, popped to the cinema last night and it was a joy of an experience because for what the first time I wanted to see X Men 2. I, I want to see that. Yeah, really I saw one. I, I didn't, I don't like that sort of thing. I've never been a comic book, never been a, um, a geek like yourself. Not yourself, yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not a geek in that, in that sense. You're different. I mean, you're, the traditional sense. No, 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 no. I'm, no. One, I'm one of those sexier geeks. Like yeah. Sexy geeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it and two's meant to be even better, isn't it? I really enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's good fun. But, uh, the, but more so than the film was the fact that the actual cinema experience for the first time in a long time I actually enjoyed because I just, I had sleep. such a problem with the cinema. Well, I, I can't go. I have to wait about three weeks that dies down and go in the afternoon. I can't be sat next to people. I, I don't know why people go to the cinema to eat. Ha have some before you go in there. Yeah. Rattling, crunching. Why, why, why is this experience? This, this film has cost 50 million pounds. Mm. It's meant to be an emotional artistic experience. It's not meant to be something that's on while you're chowing down. Yeah. I don't know. Then, people leave their mobile on. I want when someone answers it, you go, I can't talk now. I want to go, don't you smack them on their face with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. But she's, it's up to her. She's earned enough money. She can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema, <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share. Oh, right, God. next to her, a little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, um, yeah, you don't size barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She's one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really wounds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's in, and now popcorn already annoys me because and I she goes to him, are you gonna eat that? Even while I was thinking of it, you're gonna eat to me, you're gonna eat <laughs> But I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films, and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the same mix right, but what we need is something that will just slightly uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And just see the, the size, the just see the size of the buckets that yeah. go in there popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something? Or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. But and and the spoon touching the, the nice. bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this in and go, oh god, I need to eat. Well, this eat was- plan it. You don't, you don't go and play tennis eating what you, you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eat before you come out. Yeah. Have a sandwich, have a cornbread sandwich. You know what, right? Out. What annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, yeah. right? Out of respect to the film. What? So they're saying all the other films, oh, sod it, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. But well, this one cost 100 million. Ah, doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones. She may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, and she's doing God. It, but he's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six year old boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 20 he's kilograms, yeah, he's, he's three foot high, yeah. He's a little, but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she just goes, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot, that's what's important. She, she says, uh, a trailer comes on for a war film. She goes, I shan't be seeing that. She just announces it, I shan't be seeing that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them next. Oh, God. Uh, and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like, at the beginning, they yeah. do everything. Yeah. It comes up, Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema, she goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, I was thinking, would you pay to see it? And, and then uh, it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, oh, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> so it comes on, and I think, uh, in, in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something, I'm not sure, but, but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this, uh, in this, uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese. And, uh, she just starts going, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, I think no. Cheng Chong, Chong, in the cinema, just saying that out loud. No. She and her boyfriend are cracking up, they're all weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying He's to watch this He's got a laugh, film. otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh, God. The mobile phone goes off, and like you say, instead of, I mean, it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema. I'm in the cinema. Yeah, no, I'm mean, gonna start having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not gonna go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth, or Gavin, <laughs> or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you wanna do me behind the bike sheds later? Yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone, or very least, get out. I know. Get out of the cinema. But I just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. But right, you go in there and if the, they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, you go. If you whisper again, you know, yeah. if you're too stupid to be able to, to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I I was in the cinema last night, and as I came in, there was a big queue. And I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, showing you to your seat. Now. When did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I'm going in the daytime, I can find my- I'm left to fend for myself. But now it seems that on a Friday night, no. there's so many stupid people out no, there who can't I th find I their I decent that, No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because, mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I- there was another seat, I'd go, well, no, that's mine. I, mm. I, I, mm. I want lots of, I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. Oh, I want yeah. to go into a pub and go, that is too loud, that music. Those people are too annoying, they're standing up, they're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy, he's a big fat guy again, he had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right, and he had it balanced on this little wall that was, uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema, and he was, you know, he, had, he was a big fat guy, on there, just sat there, I was watching, I think it was Beetlejuice I was watching, right. and uh, some, uh, some local hard nuts, they were on the same row, they started kicking the little wall to, try to knock, knock his off. food off, and I thought, brilliant. <laughs> oh no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. And Carl Pilkerton, still arguing, this time about having help from you and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not gonna, we, I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending. Are you are arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? I wouldn't have thought so. We just need to... We can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stressed, but... And he doesn't really understand that, you know... So, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah, but. and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this will annoy you. Guess what? Think of this, you little... Slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his ass. That's so in his ass. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We well, should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, look, he looks like Charlie Brown. He's got the same sort of hair arrangement as Charlie Brown. Yeah, he's-, he's I don't like think a... Charlie was- was balding though, was he? He was only about ten. Well, no, but he just had like a couple of yeah. things on the top, and he's- and he's- his hairdo, Carl's had a hairdo that keeps it's- It's not a hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is it then? What is it? <laughs> it's- it just happened, I've told you. No, no, <laughs> the didn't. Noel was in, right, once. Noel who? Uh, Gallagher. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, right, your first name terms. Right. Yeah. And, uh- From the hood, isn't he? And- and whoever was doing the interview said, uh, well, you know, what- will- will Liam be able to keep up that sort of hard attitude, right? 
uh, say when he gets older and he goes bald, and uh, you know, could he could he still carry off the the sort of attitude that he's got? And he was like, no, no, he'd, he'd never have that style. He couldn't he couldn't have that style that lad's got in there, and pointed at me. Yeah. I said he's not a style. <laughs> I said I didn't go to the barbers and say, can you just like shave the top bit, leave the sides? <laughs> yeah. Can you remove a little spillover? That's the way it is. Yeah. Like, and you were just saying to me, what would you do if you if you went back in time? I'd probably use a better shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could tape the conversations we have off air. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are ridiculous. <laughs> what would you do if you go back in time? And the other sh stuff we were just talking about is obviously can't talk about. Can I just ask though? Sorry, wh when did you when did you start to notice it was disappearing? I mean, at what age did it kick in? Uh, I, I worked a lot. You see, you, you'll, you'll be safe, do you know what I mean? Your hair will stay there, but it's when I used to do a lot of hours, sure. a lot of hours working. <laughs> and yeah, that. you were stressed and things. Yeah. Stressed yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. they just went. Well, I'm beginning to understand that. what stress is like, you know, because I'm not getting messages and stuff like that, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. probably about, I don't know, twenty, twenty-four. That's yeah. unlucky, isn't it? Something like that. And did you did you panic or did you were you just not quite bo not bothered? Not bothered. <laughs> He's not bothered. He wouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. <laughs> but I don't think for someone who doesn't care about going bald or war or SARS or anything, you don't have to get stressed on a Saturday between one and three. <laughs> to be fair, you are worse <laughs> than all those things. <laughs> that SARS has got nothing on you when you're in the right mood. <laughs> But why why is it alright for women then to, you know, have a wig? But I couldn't have one if I wanted one. Well, there's not a wig, they get bald treatment. They actually can get they can get their hair replaced on the National Health, which might be anything, I suppose. Which might be wigs, which might be transplants. I mean the only the only cure for baldness is a transplant, which they literally take um follicles. They can get it down to individual follicles now from the back of your neck and you know, it takes a long time. And you know. But um but well, people will know anyway, won't they? I don't know when it starts though. I don't know when it starts. Like now, if you started wearing a wig, people go, "We well, wearing a wig because you were bald yesterday." Yeah. You can't. You can't start thinking right. I'm going to go bald in a year. I'll start wearing a wig now. That's the thing to do, isn't it? It is really if you're that bothered. But I wasn't. I just thought right, it's losing it a bit. Shave the lot off. But did you know you had that round head underneath it? Did you know it was going to be that funny though? You would have. Well, you presumably worn a wig, wouldn't you, if you'd have known? Because I've never seen a head that round. I think the barber when they did it, right? The woman said, "You can pull that off. You've got a good shaped head for a uh, for having it shaved." She said, That's a good head. Yeah, she looks like a tennis ball. You look like a tennis ball when you haven't shaved. Mm -hmm. She said, "If you can pull it off," she said, "That's that's like." A good thing to see if someone's good looking. If you if they can have a bald head, it's like Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. Right. She can pull it off. There's, there's those sort of things. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Of Alice. No, but that's like one of the things. If if you look good with a bald head, mm -hmm. that means you're pretty good looking. Yeah. yeah. And if you can wear a, a bicycle helmet <laughs> and look good, that's another <laughs> thing that like you must be pretty good looking. Yeah. To yeah. pull that off. But who, who, who have you seen who in the bicycle helmet rules? that you think that you think is good? Who have you seen in the bicycle helmet and thought, oh god, they must be good looking. They're good in the bicycle helmet. Well, everyone that's looks what I'm saying. Well. Who? No one looks good, do they, really? It's not so, bicycle so helmet. So, would you say Brad Pitt would look good in the bicycle helmet? Well, I don't know, I'll have to see. But I'm just saying, that's that's like one of the two things, really, that's... And what what blokes do you think would look good, bald? Who do you think would look good, bald? Er, uh, don't know, give me some names and I'll tell you whether they'd be alright if they're bald. George Clooney? Uh, I don't, I, no, I don't think he does. I don't think he would do. Uh uh, who else? Well, this uh, could run and run. Um, Al Pacino. Uh, yeah, he could probably pull it off. He'd probably look alright. Do you think he looks alright with hair then? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. Well done, Rick. <laughs> Sony award winning stuff. <laughs> Play a record. Pilkington, little bald heady Carl Pilkington. You quite like being bald, don't you? Like no I, fuss. Like I say, you know. I'll probably s won't age for a bit now. <laughs> won't age for a bit? What do you mean you won't age for a bit? Because I, I already look quite quite old. I don't think so. Not with with a hat on. You look really young. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying. So I, I won't I won't change that much. It's like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with. It. I actually don't think if you, as long as you shave it whoosh, straight back. I, c I can't have you on that. Nothing wrong with it. But that kid who had that aging disease, just shave her head. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't age that fast anymore. Do you know what I mean? She so might... this is the five-year-old girl 
who had an awful disease where- Well, we don't know much about it, to be fair. No, we just know that you fell in love with the title of the program, the girl that was older than her mum, right? And you were annoyed that people wouldn't serve her fags and alcohol. If she, if she's, if she's, you know, she's living like an eight-year-old, let her have a fag. Doesn't that sum up this show, though? Carl's comment, <laughs> we don't know much about it. <laughs> yeah. We're still willing to make comments about it, to discuss it in length and possibly make crass jokes, <laughs> even though we're ill-informed, as ever. Yeah. Right, well, there's something for you, right? Go on. This is, this is what I wanted to tell you about, right? <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah, face transplants. <laughs> There's this, uh, this, uh, some kid somewhere, right, who had a bit of a, an odd looking face. Right? A bit of a what? Bizarre looking face. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> there's a doctor somewhere who said I can sort that out for yeah. you. Right? Sure. And basically what they do is they've got to get a face off a dead person. <laughs> right. That's sorry, sorry, just, um, in this, in, in this documentary you saw, no, I did this documentary was... feature, say, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? <laughs> was it, was it that documentary you saw? All right, listen, you, you see, go on. So, uh, um, okay, no, so you face of a dead person, yeah, go no, on. Sorry, sorry to dismiss the idea of face transplants <laughs> out yeah. of hand, but go, go on. on. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a face of, of a dead body that isn't older than, like, four hours old. Right. Four hours dead. Whatever. Mm. Um, they can take it off, mm -hmm. fit yeah. it on, fit it on the new face. That makes sense. That's but it's not just it. your face that you do, is it? But it's the muscle, it's muscle tissue and, and bones, isn't it, when it's like disfigured? It could be, could be through fire or whatever or disease or whatever. So they can't just literally plonk a face on, they have to do something else, don't they? You're asking Carl, like he's gonna know. <laughs> like he, I forgot then, he looked at, I, that, was that in Russian? Yeah. I wish we could get, I wish we could get him on telly just to show the look on his face when I said that. Yeah. It, it was, was brilliant, ludicrous. wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you know when you were, uh, go to a cat, hey, we want some food then? And he just looks at you and yeah. he goes, it's almost like he can understand what we're saying. Mm. Go on. It's like if you had been caught holding a mallet over a dead body <laughs> by the police. <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm nothing. saying is, they, 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 it sort of would work, yeah. If you took, if you peeled your face off mm. and put my face on it, that, oh my god, why did you and Steve, for an experiment, swap faces? And, and the great see, thing is, I wouldn't age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you do that if, if I could? If it was safe? Uh, I, I think I'm getting the rough deal here, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, no, you would. You get some money back. It'd be part exchange. I mean, it would. You know, it's like you'd, you'd make up the difference just to wear your brilliant face for but, a week. But the doctor was saying, how, um. It's not complicated. He said the worst thing is something about, uh, the people who were related to the dead person. It's a bit weird for them still seeing the face of someone they know walking about when they're dead. Yeah, I can see yeah. that would be odd, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Carl. You are brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, you're never a dull moment. Would, it it doesn't you... matter whether you're talking or I'm squeezing your head. It's, I, it's, I'm never bored. I never go, oh, that's enough, Carl. Do you know what I mean? I never, I used, I go battling tops, I got bored. It's like computer games, you think it's the best game in the world, and someone goes, how are you getting on with Tomb Raider? You go, oh, I don't play it anymore. I go, how's Carl? I go, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I was squeezed there yesterday, I was squeaking in his face, I got him down to the ground. He said this, he said that, I'm never bored with you. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz <laughs> scale <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <laughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team. Sure. Oh, and suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again. Right? Yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Cairn, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Wood, and Carl Brink. Carl, Carl just said to me, he said, what face would you have to me? And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, whose face would you have? And I went, I don't know. Uh, a, a boy's, so uh, the skin would be regenerated. He went, oh, no, I'll be a bit weird. He said, oh no, someone famous. And I went, oh, I don't know. I went, whose would you have? He went, Barry Sheen. <laughs> No, but what I meant was, when I was talking Barry to Susan, Sheen. when I was talking to Suzanne about it, yeah. saying this is amazing, she said, well, whose face would you have? Right. Now, it's got to be fairly recent to have the skin fresh, because it can't be too old. Right. So I had a choice of, like, Barry Sheen, yeah. or, uh, what's her face, or Flask of Summer Wine. Who? Uh, who's the old woman who just passed away? Thora Heard. Thora Heard. <laughs> 
So that's what I meant. If I could have any face, because you said, well, you could have had Tom Cruise or something. Mm. I said, well, he's not dead. <laughs> So no, but you could have had that. You, you give yourself restrictions in your fantasy. So I'm like, look down to your picture. I love the idea that someone getting you a call. Uh, Mr. Milberton. Uh, hello, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away. And you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or? Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> I love the fact that- I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, oh, she, she, she was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh, you know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be good. Yeah, but then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. Yeah. But if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like people were looking at you on the tube? Well, no, like say if the people who made Mission Impossible said, "Well, we want to do a third one," <laughs> would I then would I be in my right to say, "Well, I don't want to do it"? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking. About. I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what I love thinking. the idea. This all goes nice to you with Tom Cruise's face, and then get off with the film. But why, okay. why does she have conversations like this with you? He was now on last night. He was now on the telly. Oh, I the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, was, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew. It was on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid. I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cause the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> Come on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It's, this is going, <laughs> this is going crazy, no, Carl. I don't know. You, you're just the insults are flying left, right, and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy. You've just gone wild. It's running around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, with a Co couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared right. of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, because well, yeah. Christian wants to. Do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> He's got your sort of accent and I think that. that when you put in a blender, does that <laughs> what a voice sort of mix? <laughs> <laughs> the times I thought of putting the two of you in a blender. Do you remember I, I told you that thing about the sponges, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, that freaked him out. You know, if you get uh, two sponges and uh, you dye one red and one blue and you liquidise them, we pour them into a tank of water. After a couple of hours, there's a blue sponge and a red sponge because their cells know where they and they, they reform. And do you know what he said? He went, oh, how'd you kill a sponge then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, what a great thing to say. Oh, my back's killing me because I, I, I went, um, you know, I, I did my back in last week and I had to get a chiropractor out and I couldn't walk. Well, as soon as I could walk, I mean, I came in here on my day off and did a, when you were in Bristol with your mum and dad looking mm. after you. Um, and, uh, and then I went to Salfridges Sunday and- Well, you got a bit of money now, why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, I went into the sports department and, uh, there's a golf simulator there. Thirty-eight thousand oh. pounds, and it's just like a shed. And I was looking at it like a kid in a sweet shop. And the two blokes that work there, uh, uh, they recognised me. And went, oh, right, I do. I said, yeah, good. And I was just looking at that, that simulator. It's brilliant, isn't it? He went, do you want to have a go? And I went, no, I'm crap. I can't do it. I said, oh, and I got a bad back. And then I went, you have a go. And he did it. And he cut down. He went, oh, that's not bad. And he went, do you want to go? I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and and I put all that. And I really tried my hardest. Of course you did. And it took off. And it was really good shot. And he went, good. I went, I went well. I said, oh, I'll go. And I was thinking, I've got to hit this one as well. I've got to hit this one too. And I hit it again. I had three goes. I hurt my back after the first one. <laughs> yeah, but you and, on. and it went, it went, I said, cheers, thanks very much. And I walked away. <laughs> and I went to Jane. And I went, I've got to get a cab. She went, oh, I've done my back. She went, well, why did you show off? I went, I had to. Of course you did. That I sums you up. <laughs> that just I was in agony. I was all the way back. I was I had to lay on the floor and put ice on my back again for about three hours. What was the best you <laughs> thought could happen? 
that they would just say, oh my god, that guy, <laughs> that's Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't do? <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. As I, as I was, I was seeing that, I go, cheers, yeah. As I got about a few yards away, I just slowed down, and I, and Jane go, what are you waiting for? I go, listen. Yeah. And it did this go, that man is a god. Yeah. And I go, come on, Jane, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. It's just, just all, uh, have you ever <laughs> been able to walk through a fairground, pass one of those machines, those test your strength machines, yeah. and not have a go at it? Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be very good at that. I bet you cannot walk past one of those rifle ranges and not have a go. I love, I love rifle but ranges. But you've got to be the best, I imagine. Yeah, if someone had just won before me, I'd go, it's not worth it, it's fixed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oh, dear. Pathetic. Yeah, well, that's why my back's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But I also, I don't, I hate not being able to do stuff. It's like I'm punishing the injury. Yeah. I know yeah. if I laid in bed for it, it'd be better, but I go, no, why should I? Yeah. It, I've used a, I used a, when I used to work kid, I used to hit my head on the banister or something, and I used to go and get a hammer and hit the banister. <laughs> and then I started thinking, um, uh, <laughs> when I was about eight, I remember if I'd hurt myself, I'd go, ha ha, God, didn't hurt. <laughs> 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 He's up there thinking, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> How mental is that? Carl, <laughs> what are you thinking, mate? Alright, rock busters, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Straight to it! Straight to it, go on then, who's the winner? Right, I've got to do the clues again. Right, the first one was, uh, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah, snappy, go on. VH. Yeah. Right, that was Van Halen. Van Halen, Halen of Van. Because he wanted something bigger than a car, that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, All the tenses are mixed up, <laughs> everything, it's just, look at one. Uh, second one, don't be selfish, uh, and some of that out to your mates, that was C, that was Cher, alright? It's alright. Yep. And the third one, uh, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails, the initials there, KL, they, uh, Kenny Loggins. Right. <laughs> Right, that's, that's the last the time we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no. It is. That's the last there. time. It's, it, give it, give it, just give the prize to someone. Kenny Loggins. Uh, I'm gonna give that one Kenny to Kenny uh, Loggins. Helen Perrett, she, uh, has emailed in, and, uh, actually Helen, I need you to, uh, email in your address if you would, so we can send you those, like, goodies, DVDs in the bag and stuff. But, but who would get Kenny Loggins then? If the, if the clue was good, who would get Kenny Loggins? What did he do? Footloose? Yeah. That famous film about that, where, right? where dancing was banned. Yeah. In that nebulous, <laughs> yeah. That's an extraordinary film. I saw it once in America. <laughs> like you say, Kevin Bacon in a town where dancing has been banned. I was watching it, it was like if aliens had been watching Earth, but only monitoring us through our TV and, and films. Yeah. And then tried to make a film about humans, that's the film they'd end up with. What do, think, uh, what do they, think, uh, they think of, uh, Queen the Musical? Because they're, of course, <laughs> rock and roll's banned, <laughs> isn't it? In the future. That's I'm not looking forward to the future, Rick, where feelings and emotions are gonna be banned. I, I can't believe it. Where's our hoverboards? Yeah. Um, so yeah, well done to, uh, to Henry Perry. Is that the last time we do Rockbusters? No. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, time. after the break, Monkey News. No, we, we'll play, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do a break. Don't know about Monkey News, got some other stuff as well. We'll do Monkey News after oh, the break. So, yeah. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that is brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> it always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Yeah. What's more, please? Well, Carl, do you reckon you could sort out, do, do other people that have real jingles with their name on it and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. For monkey news, that he does. Why is Christian doing monkey news? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough monkey news to go around. <laughs> right? But hold on, though, I don't want cast offs. I, I thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but wait, new? Wait, wait, Come on, wait. What's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week. He's doing like the, you know, the news that's hen type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday. We're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman Monkey News Night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you can very much right? get behind the Monkey News. It's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own spin. You're, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So are we. So but ours isn't called Monkey News anyway. It's sort of generic term like the news. But ours is called Chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's he's seen a bit of Monkey News in it. Oh, so are we doing it or not? Well, I, I, I've i got no reason I, to stop I, doing I, 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 it, 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 He probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I we know, not, I Should we not do that? 
I said that David Attenborough did Monkey News before all of us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm missing no, out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. No, I'm not no, saying no. it's a bad show. My no. point is this. There's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, monkey news in the week. They're perhaps, they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend <laughs> with Carl Pilkington. So no. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. You ready? Yeah. Right. There's this monkey. Right? Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know, I didn't say all internet, that. I'm just on telling the you. internet. I'm not sure. on the internet. I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right? This, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time. They share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to the point when the fella whose job it is, right, he starts getting old. Uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean, you mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. All right, the monkey. Okay. I'd love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff, yeah. so the train's sort of coming on the right line. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the trains coming and that. I have British Rider listening. Yeah. Right? Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company are happy with that. <laughs> I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best <laughs> monkey for the job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right, once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman. It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before like before trains, probably. Well, it's, uh, in the 1880s, yeah. uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh dear, he's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in actually and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. You've never. He always, he always has some um, t-shirts right on up and long sleeve. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the, the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with, what's wrong with that? You're a, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why you, your, your IQ is sort of about 80. I think you might be. You might, I, I don't mean uh, there was any, I think it was a genetic sort of, sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. What? <laughs> 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 Just, uh, look, give me that banana and shut up, play a record. <laughs> well, nearly another show over, Carl. You've not got a squeaky chair there. Why don't you sort that out? Have it oiled? What do you, what do you do in the week? Do you know what I mean? Can I just, um, nominate a woman that annoyed me today? Go on. Uh, on the tube. I got off at Piccadilly Circus. Um, the sign says, mind the gap. Big sign saying, mind the gap. Voice on the, uh, tannoy says, mind the gap. Woman steps over the gap, goes, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> 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 oh, he's living. I was just annoyed. I wanted to slap her. There's always one in there every day. Well, just, uh, so, so as you walk down the street, I just feel like I want to squat certain people out the way. Well, squat them out the way. We like went, it. we went into this, uh, uh, little restaurant, me and go to, uh, me and Carl. Was it Thursday? And we're sitting down there, and, um, it's busy outside, and we were going to sit at the back, she went, that's no smoking. I went, yeah, we're not going to smoke, so we sit there, right at the back, right? We get there, and there's just another, there's two women, there, right? and I'm sitting there, and they light up a fag. And I go to Carl, there might be no smoking. 
He went, yeah, so what? I went, where's the principal? The rules are there. He goes, rules? You say twat, muff, and shit on air. Then mind rules. I went, well, they've annoyed me now, right? Yeah. So the waitress comes over and he's put, he goes, oh God, he puts his head down. Well. I said, uh, I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like this. I went, um, I thought she was no smoking. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> she went, it is, yeah. And I went, right, okay, well, they're smoking. She went, she went, oh, well, you'd have to move then. I went, what? She went, do you want to smoke? I said, no, I don't want to smoke. I said, they're, I said, they're smoking over there, right? Try not to, uh, and she went, oh, well, I told you. I said, no, I don't want to smoke. They're smoking. <laughs> she went, oh, right, and I got, I got a move, didn't I? See, that's what a it. little snitch. <laughs> yeah. But it annoyed me. Do you worry, though, that, that someone's <laughs> gonna look around and go, is that Ricky Jones off the telly? Yeah, well, I can't complain now. I said, if I go in, I get bad service, I can't complain, because I think, oh, look at him, he thinks he can complain. So I have to do it, I have to do it, um, secretly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, uh, oh, there was a, uh, oh, God. Right. People come up to me, they recognize me, and they all give a lot of us, and I, I don't mind it at all. I don't know, I never know what to say, and I'm always, you know, I say, thank you very much, I say, love the show, whatever, I say, of course, and, and that's great, and they're polite. And I was in the pub the other day, uh, and I was just with Johnny, and, um, people have been coming up, they go, do you mind what I said, no worries at all, yeah, absolutely fine, right? And, um, and then this group came in, about eight, twenty-somethings, right? And they're, they're a bit pissed up. And this woman comes up to me, right, and she goes, she stands there, she goes, ah, oh, right, we like you in our house, right, but you're not as good as Paul Calf. And I went, oh yeah, Steve Coogan, I said, he's brilliant, isn't he? She went, yeah, yeah, you're not as good as him. I went, oh, well. You know, it's not bad to come second to, is it? And then, she, cause I did that, she went, she went, ah, oh, no, you're, you know, we, you know, you're great. Like, I've just done my dissertation. I went, oh, right, well, it's in nursing. She went, yeah. She went, ah, oh, right. Anyway, she went, ah, oh, can I have a hug? And I went, well, huh. she went, can I have a kiss? I went, well, not really. No. And then this woman who wanted to take a photo, she went, oh, you were so nice on the BAFTAs. I went, well, I am being nice. I just, I'd rather, I, you know, I don't know you. And I, I was like, oh, God, it was embarrassing, right? And then, um, so I took a picture, right? And then she was, anyway, and they sort of dragged her away. And they sort of dragged her away. And then, uh, uh, I was going, oh, God, 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 I've got to go now, because they're over there. I said, I can't, I can't stand it. I don't mind. Her. And, uh, she came and she, she came over and she went, Ricky, and she sat down and I went, I'm going. Uh, and I just, I had to go. And then I was with Johnny and Johnny went, oh God, I've left my bag there. So we had to go back to go back. She's going through the bag. Oh. She, she, and she went to me, you bastard, I'll never effing watch you again. I thought, well, all right. I don't know what to say, yeah. really. Nice of her to clean up her bad language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she Family knew. Pub. I know. She no, knew. I just, I got no time for it. I just think it's, I know. it's out of order. You know, I, I mean, this, this whole sort of notion that, that it's, if you're a celebrity, you're public property. I, I just, I discount it. They go, people, you know, what you hear people say, oh, it's me who put you where you are today. And I think, well, yeah. Thanks for watching, but but we made the show and everything. I we know. Put it, we put it on the TV. It's not like if you get a plumber around, he does his job and work for you. you don't go around his house and hassle. Him, I or, don't. Or, it's not. I don't seek it. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't phone up the. But you know what I mean? I don't try and get on the telly or anything, and I, I refuse to. I don't go to showbiz parties, but I refuse not to go to the pub with my mate. And I just seek out. There's fewer and fewer pubs, and I just go to the the quietest. You know, one old bloke and a dog, and it's sort of like. But most people are really. I love brilliant. it, honestly, honestly. But, people but, who come out and they're polite, and I, I chat. Like, say I love people, the show. It's like it's alcohol. It's alcohol. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's just oh god. They mutate into something. You know, and they different. just yeah, they, they don't understand. Yeah, of course they don't. You know, they're not, they're but to me, it's really. the same people who who who, who be bad, behave badly in the cinema. It's just this breed of person. It just, it just. I mean, I know. Can I put them in room one hundred and one? Let's do that next week, shall we? What are we all having a moan? Yeah, go on. Tell you who's annoyed me this week. Go, go on. on. If we we're making a little feature. Go on. David Blunkett. <laughs> What's Blunkett been up to? He's uh, was reading yesterday. His, his dog has been. He's not. His dog's not been around your house again. No, nope. causing trouble outside. He's put a stop to people having sex outdoors. What's up with him? What's up with that? <laughs> if he had sight, would he have stopped it? <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>